other noises do you hear? Maybe a few people creeping in from the back. Come in, Craig. Have a seat. Maybe you can just... What are you tasting? What are you smelling? And just think to yourself, what is the thing that you saw last before you closed your eyes, if you haven't already closed them? Now turn your attention inwardly to, the, to your breath, the gentle rhythm of your breath. And just notice how your body feels right now. Don't judge it. And just imagine that this breath is God, God's presence continually coming into our being. Act to the presence of God. Allow God's presence to be felt in every breath. With your eyes closed, I'm going to read the psalm, and the idea is, as for Lecter Divine, what word touches you? What word grabs your attention? O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you. In a dry and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory because your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with the richest of foods, with singing lips, my mouth will praise you. On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night because you are my help. I sing in the shadow of your wings. My soul clings to you. Your right hand hold, upholds me. And just for a moment, just Think of the word that has touched you. And just hold that in your mind. You know, just like a child holding a fluffy toy. Don't be traumatized by it, but just kind of hold it. I'll read it again and see if, if that word changes its, its place in your mind. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you. In a dry and weary land where there is no water, I have seen you in the sanctuary and upheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you. It will praise you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips my mouth will praise you. On my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me, upholds me. Maybe your word has changed. That's okay. There's no right or wrong. It's just as the Spirit is moving in your hearts. What's that word or phrase? And allow the Spirit to show you what it means 
for you. It's touched you for some reason, but it has a special meaning for you that will not have any meaning for anyone else. read it for the third time. O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you. In a dry and weary land where there is no water, I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory because your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help. I sing in the shadow of your wings. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. How is that word touching you now? What meaning, what voice of God are you hearing? Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your spirit to speak through your word. Tonight, we thank you for this wonderful Psalm 63. We thank you, Lord, for the words that touch us, transform us, invigorate us, and teach us of your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, just three people. Would you like to share of your experience, your word, and your... Have you got the mic? Thank you. So just so those who are on live stream, hi there, everybody, sitting at home with a whiskey and soda. Remind you, it's Lent. It should just be the soda. But anyway, carry on. I can't see you, but God can. So just what word touched you? And... What was happening? Just gently. Anybody? Um, <coughs> yes, Father, I'll start. Um, the first was my God in the very beginning. Oh, yes. And then it was, I can't remember the words exactly, but I will think of you in my bed. On my bed, I remember you. On my bed, okay. I remember you. And then I cling to you. My soul clings to you. Oh, so it changed from each time. Well, they seem to join on. <laughs> okay, that's lovely. Yeah. That's beautiful. Okay, so, oh God, on my bed, my soul clings. Lovely, thank you. So there's no perfect way of doing this. You know, the, the method says think of one word and let it go deep, but if it changes, move, move with the spirit. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, John? <laughs> So I go back to the word love. My love, love is greater than your life. Because your love is better than Be life. Better than your life. Okay. Yeah. I think love appears so many times in the readings. And so that's a very, very important for me. His love for me. Yeah. Thank you, John. Lovely, lovely. And the last one, Maro. All the guys, ladies, you have to um, change this the next time around, eh? The, all the time you read, the word that hit me hard was the word need you. Need you. I need you. My life needs you. My God, oh my God, I need you. Right in the beginning. I'm just trying to find where it is in the... I need you. I don't see it here, see, but it's interesting. My soul needs you. My body needs you. My soul will be satisfied as with the richest food. Yeah, the but that doesn't matter. 
I, I, I might well be there, but I've just skimmed through it. The word need came out every time you Okay, read. lovely. Yeah, so that's also possible, you know. You don't have to pick up on this word. It's the word that resonates, and that might be more important. The way I like to explain is that these scriptures have been written by people who are close to God so many thousands of years ago. I mean, this is way beyond the New Testament. So they've written it from a heart of love, and then it's been translated into other languages, and now it's in English, and now we hear it, and we have our experience in this day and time. So it's like connecting with all the ancestors, and now it's need. So whether it's several, a strand from the three, or maybe a word that just comes up naturally, or a word that is actually there, all is good. Because Lecta Divina is about using the scripture and allowing the scripture to speak to us in our hearts. That's why we do the feeling and the, all of that. Okay, good. So let's move on a, a little bit because <clears throat> there's one of the most important things for us to remember is that with Ignatian spirituality and all these different prayer methods that we've learned through these six weeks, we need to understand that um, in our world, Scripture must become relevant. So I'd like to ask you now, and just say it out loud. We won't wait for the microphone. I'll repeat it so those who are um, um, on live stream can hear. What are your concerns right now? Individual concerns. I don't need anything personal. But in the world, in your family, what you've heard other people's, what are the concerns and the anxieties and the pains of the world around us at the moment? Let's have some. Sorry? Provision. Provision. Okay. War in, the world. War in the world. Who isn't thinking about Gaza and, and Israel? Sickness. Sickness. Temptation. 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 Greed. Greed. Political turmoil. Elections. Today I was in Durban... And it's just horrific how the city is just so. There are pockets of niceness, but there's just so much grime and dirt. Yeah. The feeding scheme at the Dennis Hurley Center, they feed now 500 people a day. That's huge. Huge. They've never had to do that before. What else is in your mind? What about your children? Their future? What about the fact that, you know, you might have saved up a whole lot of money for your pension, but you're not sure if that's going to last? Because we're all going to live to 120, obviously. The Catholics, I don't know about the rest, but you know. What about the children? All these things are so important. Yeah. Exactly. So... St. Ignatius says that we have got to look at the challenges in the world. We mustn't, you know, we can say, oh, well, let's pray and they will all go away and I will cope. No. The challenge, mind, body, and soul, is to interact as much as we can. So, the challenge is to look at the world with big eyes, to really see what is going on around us everywhere, to notice the pain and the suffering. Be aware of it. That's what Jesus was doing. He looked at the leper. He looked at the woman caught in adultery. He looked at Judas who was going to betray him. He looked at Peter who was going to deny him. He wasn't just going onto the mountain thinking, oh, well, I hope it all goes well and the Father has a plan. No, he noticed all these things. But he also noticed the joy and the delights. He changed the water into wine. All of these things. So 
both the good and the bad, the sick and the healthy. Look at everything. Look at everything. And especially look beyond our own lives. And that's where we were trying to get into the mind space. And I think it's very important that we look beyond our families and beyond our communities. So, so often we can find that churches like to just look at themselves and look after themselves and to maintain themselves. Pope Francis and all the wise leaders say the church is just a space in order to go into the world. So we have to keep our eyes open. We must live our lives filled with this purpose of going out as Jesus did. To have this relationship, so our prayer life is very important, but we must know that our prayer life is not just for me or for my family. It is in fact for the whole world. The Ignatian way of living begins with our becoming aware that God loves us first, and as we explore God's love for us, we find that that love draws us even deeper into a personal relationship with Jesus who came to save the world. So we can't just stay with this one-on-one -on -one relationship. We've got to move. And that's why the spirituality of employment is so important. And there is such a thing that there's a whole, there's so many documents written about the um, s certain Engadi Mitzpahs um, and other, other documents I, it that don't come to mind at the moment. It's about we must see our work as a gift from God in order to evangelize. We are challenged to work for justice and peace. The Ignatian way of living recognizes that our God calls us into action. Remember we pray the Our Father always, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, most of our day is not spent in church, not even if you're a priest. So where is God expecting us to be praying? So whether it is keeping Belito safe, like Craig is doing for us, whether it's um, um, Glenda and, who are you now? Roland. Roland. She had another skellum the last week, so I was, <laughs> <laughs> you know, doing our marriage course, um, 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 John and Helen playing golf all day, wherever it is that you are, and you are manifesting this Ignatian spirituality, it needs to flow in our workplace. I'm sure every time people bet they're praying to God, hey, Brett, yeah, yeah, that's probably where they pray more to God than they do in a church, you know. We should have a whole big mission down there at um, Hollywood. But seriously, and this is where Remember we spoke about the discernment of spirits. So when we go into the outside world, this thing of discerning what gives me consolation, what gives me desolation, helps us to discern what is our personal vocation. So for us <coughs> Christians who are following our Lord Jesus, it is not where does, what is needed in the world. Is it, there, this is where Ignatian uh, steps of... Um, discernment steps in. We need to reflect inwardly about our deepest desire. We need to ponder about our actual gifts and resources. Where would I be best use to God, given my unique gifts and limitations? I find this such an important phrase, because we live in a world that says, oh, there's Roland, we need somebody to sweep the streets. Would you mind sweeping the streets for us? Oh, Glenda, you know, I'm feeling like, you know, um, one of those lovely puddings. Would you mind go off and... So we are not asking the deeper question, saying, 
What is your deepest desire, Roland, that God has placed in you as a unique desire? And how can that desire be prayed into being manifest and to enable it to ignite and change our community? We, we start at the wrong place. Because if you figure it like this, if we are all created in the image and likeness of God, surely God has a divine plan for each and, sing, each and every one of us and everyone in the world. And if we started by understanding what is my divine gift and resources that I have now at this moment, and what is God calling me to do with these gifts and talents? Imagine if that was our starting point <coughs> in the world, rather than how much money can I make for me and my family? So it's a whole different way of looking at our gifts and what God has for us in the world. And this is why we need to think of this relationship we have with God and using these prayer methods so that we can go out into the world recognizing and discerning our vocation so that we are not frustrated human beings, but we are being ignited from the gift that God has given us, the unique gift. I love the, the, the stat, apparently, for each of us to be the unique person we are, there were 400 trillion chances that this Stephen would be this genetic code. You know? 400 trillion chances. And they've calculated that from the male sperm and the, and, and, and the, I don't know how, how many um, eggs the lady has in her life, but they've done all those calculations and that's what they come up with. <coughs> so imagine the uniqueness of each one of us sitting here. Imagine the unique gifts of each one sitting here. Imagine if we could all focus on everybody's unique gift and say, oh, Bongani, how can we make sure Bongani shines? Because if he's shining, I can understand how I can shine. You see, it's a totally different way of thinking. Isn't it brilliant? And the Ignatian way of praying is saying, let's get ourselves so close in relationship with our Lord Jesus that we can discern the unique gifts he's given us and then go into action in the world from our divine space and unique origin of beauty that only I know and understand with God of my understanding. Isn't that amazing? That's how Ignatius sees um, life. I'm aware of time. Remember Ignatius always said, have time to chat to one another. So just talk to one another now. So I'm going to set up something a little different to do the next se section. Just share, what are your thoughts about what I have just said? And talk to a stranger, please. <laughs> if you can't find a stranger, I don't know what you can do.
if we can wrap up, and I'd like three ladies to share this time, if possible. I'd like to ask you to please stand up. Please. Please stand up, yeah. Okay, let's kick our left foot three times. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Right foot. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Shake the left hand. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Right hand. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Nod the head. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, let's be seated. You know, it might seem silly, but sometimes in our, if we get stuck in our prayer, certainly, you know, you find that your back is a little bit, um, when you get older, maybe, it's just, maybe it's an old thing. Sorry, Craig, um, all the young ones, but you know, you'll get there and you'll understand what we're talking about it in a thousand years' time. But when you're feeling a bit, you know, the back or whatever, just stretch it out in prayer. It's fine. Because what it does is that it takes away that distraction and it makes the blood flow, goes back into the head, and don't do what Michelle did and go and knock herself out on a cupboard or something. But, you know, just kind of, <laughs> get ourselves gently back into the space. So, uh, maybe the ladies, three ladies can share with us, um, can we have the microphone, uh, Roland, about, so that whole sense of everyday life going beyond just our own prayer life, that, those comments about our uniqueness. Thanks, Z. And then Annie, did you also have your hand up? It looked like it was going up. Thanks, Thank Z. you, thank you, Father. Um, I think, um, firstly, about um, the verse that was read today, um, which talked about the soul and the body, the body longing for God, and then in the end, the soul clinging to God, and the God holding, you know, me or my body uh, with the right hand upholding with so I just thought that it talks to the theme of um, this land and and then back to what um, um, you know we we think about the, the gifts that are given to us and what God wants us to do with those gifts you know it's 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 a question that I sometimes meditate about, but I, I'm not sure whether it's been revealed completely what um, God calls me to do with those gifts, but it's an everyday, um, you know, attempt at, at trying to find out what exactly it is that I'm called to do with those gifts, but Lovely. Yeah, thank yeah. you. And then don't forget the examen will help you bring that together. The examen, that's another prayer form. That will help you. So we, you normally go from A to Z, but today we're going from Z to A. So it was Z, and now we go to N. Why, why go A to Z if you can go from Z to A? <laughs> you leave the best for last. Of course. <laughs> um, when you were speaking about our gifts and that it's part of a bigger picture. It just took me to what I've been going through this week and learning that we have to understand our story within God's bigger story. Understand our story now. And if you understand our story within God's bigger story, you will understand that through Genesis, he, each one of us have innately been given three attributes, I suppose, that regardless if you believe or not, we all have them. 
and that is that we are designed to love and be loved, that we each have a purpose, and that we each want to feel significant and valued. And that we belong, some people And that say, you yeah. belong. And if you can understand yeah. that is what he gave us before the fall, you can't get away from it. We each have a purpose. We each have significance. We each have value. And he wants us, that is better expressed through connection with others. Yeah. And it was just... It connected all of that to what you were saying, yeah. how we have gifts, we need to give back, we need to, it's how we are designed and that's how we will always be, oh, we want to be loved, we want to feel loved. We will always be asking, what is my purpose? What is my significance? I want to feel valued. Mm. Because it's our way to understand how to connect and how others will be relational to us. I yeah. don't know, it all just... Yeah. So beautiful. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. 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 It, if we go deep enough, we're going to understand the connection with God every time. And the mystery, that whole clinging that Z was talking about, you know. And it just fits together if we trust long enough to wait and see, I think. Yeah. And that's where meditation comes in. Because we get time to come back and think, ah, okay, haven't seen that before. The last, I wanted three ladies, but if you want to jump into that boat, you, you're welcome, Maro. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've come to realize one thing. That you, was the live streamers need to hear your voice. Thank okay. You. Um, I've come to realize one thing. That really... I'm not in this world to impress anybody. I'm not in this world to make anybody say, wow, look at that. I've come to realize that I've got to impress God, that I've got to make him understand that I'm a good servant and that whatever I've done, I'm sorry about it and I am truly sorry about it. And really what people think of me is not important. Possibly the only person I'm worried, sort of concerned about what they think of me is you as my connection to God or my direct connection to God in this church. Before that, I didn't have that. And it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to understand because, yes, I drive a nice car, stay in a nice house, and people would say, wow, you know. But really, I don't care whether he was riding a bicycle or not. You understand? I have to keep a certain, not appearance, a certain something in life because as I was saying during the discussion it's all well and good but you made a statement that said we mustn't be worried about our money and our money for our, making money for our family but with all due respect if I'm not yet to make sure that my family is taken care of and if my family is suffering what the heck am I doing here yeah. it's not what God says I've given you children respect them like they shall respect you so it really doesn't matter what the world outside means because when you go outside there, you are hit by temptation. That's the other word I've used. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here. I'm happy. I don't feel anybody pushing on me. I go out there and I literally have to have eyes at the back of my head because I know that I'm going to do something wrong or I'm going to feel something wrong. And I try very hard every day and I find myself every evening saying to God, please forgive the sins that I've committed with and without my knowledge. Yeah. So, with all due respect, what you were saying, the three gifts is fine. But as long as you direct them to God, if you feel that you've had a good day with God, then you've done well. If you haven't, then you have something to apologize for. Yeah. God gives you another, another day. And that's why I say, please God, wake me up to praise you another day. Yeah, that goes back to the Ignatian thing that everything is in God. God is in everything, even in every desire, when we look deeply enough. Thank you, Roland. Yeah. So just because um, I'm looking at the time, <clears throat> no, it's absolutely beautiful because you've made that point that, you know, that God is the only one we have to worry about. But on earth, we do worry. As you say, when you go out, there's all these other things that come in place. 
Yeah, and so we have to bring this, this juggling all the time, this whole dynamic movement of God's power from our prayer life into our action life and vice versa. So another way of praying is praying with pictures. And there I put three pictures. <coughs> so we learned how to pray with scriptures as we did the Lecture Divine, but this is now another way of praying. So I'm going to ask you to look at these pictures and choose one that really sticks out for you more than the other. Okay, just in your own mind, just have a look. Am I in your way? Okay. Am I in your way, Paul? You can see? Okay. So just have a look and see what picture sticks out for you more than others. And then just keep focusing on that picture and kind of fall into it. Allow the picture to speak to you. And if that picture could talk, what would it be saying to you? So if that picture could say something to you, what would it be saying? Now imagine the voice that you're hearing from the picture is God's voice. Bring that into your conversation. Just keep looking at the picture. What message is coming through. And now enter into a dialogue with God. Have a conversation. For three minutes, have a conversation with God as he speaks to you through these pictures. bit like a child that speaks to an imaginary person. What is God saying? What are you saying to God? How are you feeling as you're talking to God through these pictures in your dialogue?
now in the Ignatian way, just review the conversation. Just review that conversation you've had with God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Okay, can we have three people, perhaps three people who haven't already spoken, if you would like to share. I think we now know each other enough. So if you haven't shared, uh, would you like to perhaps share now? Thanks, Helen. How was that experience for you? Ah, actually, well, thoroughly. Well, which was your picture, sorry? Uh, the one on the end here, it's very difficult. It, so it spoke to me in two ways. Yes. Um, firstly, it's like a mom or a family embracing, loving, holding tight. And then if you look at the top little ball, which would be a head, there's actually a shadow on there that almost looks like the world. Yes. And it just, it was to embrace and hold and protect. protect. The word protect came out to me big time. That's and so um, yeah, so it looked as a whole bigger picture. The same colors you'd be wearing tonight. <laughs> and, that kind of, and I think that's also really significant because certain days we, we notice certain colors other than uh, ask yourself, what do those colors mean for your soul? Anyone else like to share? Who hasn't shared? Please be be brave. Thanks, Linda. I also chose the picture on the right. Um, okay. To me, it's my family. It's um, my two children, my husband, myself, my daughters-in-law, even my little grandchildren are there at the back in this in the shadows, and God has His arms around all of us and keeping us very close and protecting us from the outside shadows and I just feel that perfect love Lovely. for all of us in the family. Beautiful. There's, there's a lot of this art. Hey, I think they do it from Central Africa. They seem to have perfected this bread. <coughs> yeah, if you wouldn't mind just so that the last stream is I, I think that's called mother and child and in Africa they carve it out, out of wood and they also carve it out of stone. Um, yeah. So I also picked that purely for that reason and I saw exactly really? what they were saying there. Um, the top part I saw the world and obviously in that there's the mother and the child. But I took it further than that because if you if you look at the circle in the middle and you see the love of that mother, mm. and then below that, um, I'm seeing a bit of disconnection, but there is a very stable base oh, to yeah. the whole thing. So yeah. it's, a, it's a case of how do we get the whole statue to be that perfect middle part? So it's praying for peace in the world. That's what I saw. Yeah, wonderful. Isn't it amazing that the three people that have commented have only commented on the one picture, which is brilliant. Did anybody, was anybody focusing on the Holy Spirit picture? One, two, three, four, five? It is the biggest one, isn't it? <laughs> and, and, and the face, the face of Jesus, one? One, amazing, yeah. Can we have just a comment about the Holy Spirit? Somebody who hasn't spoken? And it was the Holy... Who, who chose the Holy Spirit? Bongani, would you like to say something? Please, just in the microphone. <coughs> yeah, the, loud, Baba. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. Uh, come, Holy Spirit. I'm looking at the come. Whoever is inviting me is a generous person. Do I deserve to join them where they are? That... It needs to be examined. And then right at the bottom. So <laughs> there's a blessing that comes from the the, the picture at the, the bottom in the bottom. The there. bottom yeah, the fire. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Thank you, Bongani. 
And Paul, you spoke about, would you like to just give a, yes, yeah, we don't have a choice, you know, you're on the spot, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I said three, but I've changed my mind. <laughs> yeah, I've focused just sort of asking, you know, where to, where to from here, what, what do you, what do you need from me, what are you wanting from me, where are you directing me? And all I got was come. And I, I didn't actually, now that Morgani mentions it, I didn't even look at that one. I didn't even realize it was plain in sight there. But the word I got from that was come, and it just was repetitive, just, just come to me. So I just meditated on that. Yeah. What particular part of the face did you focus on? I think the slightly open lip, as if the he's lip. talking to me, yeah. So Isn't it's, amazing, it, yeah? it wasn't, it wasn't a smile. It wasn't, uh, it was just as if he's actually saying something. So, yeah, mm -hmm. wonderful. Thank you. I find this method of praying kind of insightful because it doesn't have to be a physical picture. It can be something in nature. It can be a scene on the side of the road. It whatever catches our attention. The way I'd like to, the way I explain it <coughs> is like, well, let's start with the pictures. These pictures have all been painted by a parishioner by the name of Anne Pringle. She also painted the one on the left. She's um, not a commercial uh, painter, but she's learning it in her retirement. And she does religious stuff as well as other stuff. But she's a prayerful lady, been through life experience, experiences like all of us. So when she paints, as every artist, they paint from their own experience of life. And so when they choose a picture or colors, whatever, they're painting, it is an, it's an expression of themselves and their relationship with the world. And so when we look at pictures like this, we resonate with possibly with what she was seeing and probably a whole lot more. So I know, Anne, you are on the live stream, so it would be nice to know what was in your mind when you painted these pictures. <clears throat> because, you see, the God of the entire universe that has created everything that we know and see enables us to use our gifts and talents in particular ways, not just to have a physical picture that can fade or burn or we can throw in the bin, but something that God can use to touch other people. And Ignatius says, let's become aware of these moments of God's touch in our lives. Some people say that whatever you are wearing or eating, there's a message in it. Be aware. Not be scared. But just be aware. Okay. So, <clears throat> By way of summarizing what we've done in the last six weeks, St. Ignatius says that when we look at prayer, we've had the act of the presence of God, getting to know the presence of God, that sense, the five senses and the breathing, God is present in me, breathing in me. We've had the Lecta Divina with the scriptures, we've had gospel contemplation, being imaginative in, this, in the, the picture. We've had um, praying with pictures. We've had the examen where at the end of the day or sometime during the day we ask ourselves the question, what, how, you know, reviewing the last 24 hours, what has been going on? Where have I experienced God's presence? Have I responded well to it? Where have I responded badly to it? What is God asking me to do better for tomorrow? That whole examen. Remember, he said that this was one of the prayers that if we forget any other kind of prayer, the examen is the one we should stick with. 
because it focuses us on that personal relationship. What's going well? What's not going well? Is, do I feel God's presence? Why don't I feel God's presence? Is there something I need to change so that I can settle down? I find the examen brilliant when you're going off to sleep because then it kind of settles the craziness and the beauty of the day into a beautiful moment before we go to, go to sleep. So it's like a seamless garment. It's not just, you know, what, what Ignatius, I think, is trying to tell us is that it's saying, don't just wake up and think, okay, um, um, I'll, I'll do half an hour of this prayer and then I've prayed and that's fine. You know how often, you know, um, people say, oh, my prayer life is terrible. Or during Lent, people say, you know, I really haven't prayed as much as I wanted to pray. There's truth in that to some extent, but what I think we have in mind is that we say, well, I wanted to go to every adoration during Lent, and I only went once. Oh, that's bad. It would be better for us to think, well, that's what I wanted to do, but it didn't happen because this came up. My child was sick and I had to take the child to the doctor. So that becomes your prayer experience. So it's about seeing how all these different prayer methods can become part of our everyday life whenever it suits us. Because we all have different moods and moments in our lives. And how do we do it? I was speaking to um, um, a parishioner and I went to see him and he said, oh, you know what happened on, on, on Saturday while I was about to come to Mass and we had planned it, we've got two small kids and, we have, and they've got two small kids in, and he said, we had this whole strategy, him and his wife, um, because the kids are tiny. So, and they said, we, are, we want to go to Mass without kids. They both agreed, that, so that this was the plan. He would go Saturday evening, and she would look after the kids. And so he had planned, he was going to come early, he was going to come and just have a Mass. Imagine what it must be like for a, a I mean, only you guys would know. You know, this is like a big treat. I'm going to go to Mass without my kids. I'm going to really focus. And then they planned that was sa sa uh, Friday morning, uh, sa Sunday morning he was going to do some kind of sport thing. He's a Belita person. And then she was going to come unhindered by kids Sunday evening. The plan was there. <laughs> He's coming early for Saturday evening mass. The wife phones and says, I'm so sorry, but something's going on with these kids. They're ballistic. And he hears his two kids going crazy in the background, what does he do? Obviously, turns around. Didn't get to the mass because he had family issues. Now, in God's eyes, did he do the right thing? 100%. So what was his prayer? meet me in my chaos. And so when we were talking about it, he was saying, yeah, as I was going back, I was having this discussion with God, you know, why is this happening? Because, you know, I was going to do a holy thing and I haven't done this for months because the kids are small, blah, blah, blah. I'm planning it. Surely God's going to make a plan with two kids. Surely God can do that. But he was saying as he was thinking about it and frustrated about that and asking the questions, he kind of got a calmness to say, fine, no. These kids have been given to me by God as precious. I'm their only earthly father. Isn't that more important at this stage of his life for the kid and for him than wanting a selfish, I want to be alone with you. 
Is it a crazy way? And so I see you, Mario. And I think with these prayer methods that we 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 handing on to you, it doesn't exclude the novenas and the Hail Mary. They're all there. They're all there. But as by way of saying, how do I when do I use them best in the life that I'm living now? As a priest, as a husband, as a wife, retired, doing business, whatever it is, how do I bring what is important for me now so that I can feel that God is in everything and within every desire that I have? It's just such a, a unique way of seeing it, isn't it? Yeah. Maria? It never stops. Sorry, 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 Roland. No, you're quite right, please. Now, I just wanted to say, once you have children, it's a lifetime uh, job. You, you never get rid of it. doesn't matter how old they are. Because in your eyes, you, you sort of saw them being born. So, yeah. It just doesn't stop. It doesn't matter what age they are. Bongani is agreeing with you. Yeah, oh, you can just say, oh, I agree totally. <coughs> okay. So it's now 7 o'clock, so I don't want to go on too much, and I do want to have like a little concluding prayer for this evening. Part of the Ignatian spiritual um, package that we have open is that is spiritual direction. So one of the things that the Ignatian School of um, Institute offers is that they do training. I'm doing the training now as a spiritual accompaniment. It's a three-year course, and there are many more people being trained. There's 40 on the course at the moment from throughout South Africa, but there are many who are already trained, like the presenters that came here. And they help individuals understand and grow their relationship with God. So it's an individual session regularly on a month and you really just talk about not I have a problem with the economy and I've, I've or, you know, it's not a problem solving thing. It's a growing deeper in relationship with God thing. So spiritual direction is one of the uh, services that the Institute offers. Also there are retreats. Um, so it's something that I think is so important in this, 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 this world. It's, it's rather difficult to, know, to go on retreat. But one of the, the, you know, so we have an eight-day retreat. All priests are asked to go on, on an eight-day retreat um, once a year. The, um, the uh, Ignatian Spiritual offers a 30-day retreat that you can do once in your lifetime. I'm hoping to do it in a few years' time. Um, so these retreats where you go away for so many days are also important. But what they're also doing now, they have a 30-day um, retreat, but it is a, a daily retreat. So you focus on it. You still go home and you do your work, but every day you have one hour where you come and sit with a spiritual director and you talk about how's it gone, give you scriptures, and then you go out and live it and you come back so there's all different methods of doing it um, and you can see even at the the Dominican house in um, in um, Durban they're having retreats there's about five or different retreats I'm doing one in October November I'm giving it on the Ignatian spirituality so once again that is open to you so in conclusion of all the prayers that we have learnt, the examen is the one that we should not run away from and try and make that a gentle everyday thing so the examen is to call the Holy Spirit to review your day see what has gone well where you feel that God's presence has been part of your day. And look where maybe the spirit of evil has distracted us. 
and ask God to reveal how we can do better in those particular areas the following day. And then thank God for the experience. Okay? So, three questions or comments before we go into our closing ritual for Hearts on Fire. Anybody would like to say something about the six weeks? before we close and pray. There was a deathly hush. That's also good. Okay. So, I have a little surprise. Please pass on and just take one. Not one of each, just either one of those seats or those seats, and just pass it on, please. And this is my gift to you. See, I'm not getting a gift from you. I'm going to give you a gift. I'm hoping it's going to make you feel guilty, but probably not. Sorry, I didn't have time to wrap it up for you. Please don't eat it. Too late. <laughs> okay. You got the last big one, but there are other little ones there, hey? Huh? Yes, carry on, carry on. Sorry, the last four will just get the lemon. Thanks, Roland. Yeah, no, that's fine. So I'm going to read from Luke 8, 4 to 8. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good ground. It came up and yielded a crop, a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. So that seed you're holding in your hand has the potential of growing thousands of lemons and I don't know how many avos. But if you want to see those avos, if you want to see those lemons, if you want to swap, if you decided you'd rather have a lemon, you have to do that on your own. You've got to take it and you've got to plant it. You've got to know how to plant it, where to plant it, how much water, all of that kind of stuff. And we can learn that by trial and error. Somebody's already throwing away his seed. There's a sign. <laughs> but clearly... The onus is on me if I've been given a seed, isn't it? And so the idea is for us to decide with what we've learnt in these last six weeks, what are we going to do with this seed of learning new ways of praying? Some of you have already planted it. And you know that when the seed is planted, it's going to take some time 
before it starts to germinate. And you're going to have to watch it and look at it and cultivate it. It can't just plant it and walk away. It may or may not grow. Lucky you if it does. But the more we look after the seeds that God plants in our hearts, the more we're going to see the fruits of what God has given us. So, we leave that as a concluding little exercise to plant that thought in our minds, and that's your gift. To remember, what I've learned, am I going to put it into play? And maybe, as like all of us, you know, we might forget, and when we see a seed, or this seed, we remember, ah, oh, what did I do with what I gained when I was doing the hearts on fire? So I would like just a reading for <clears throat> from a, and a tribute to the blessed Oscar Romero. Oscar Romero was a wonderful archbishop. Um, I can't remember where he was now. I'm in the, oh my goodness. But he's in one of these war-torn um, countries and he was shot celebrating mass because he spoke out against um, the, the corrupt was it Argentina? It was one of those countries in Southern America, yeah. Um, and he wrote this, uh, obviously before he was shot. Um, no, it was a, it's an, a, a, a tribute to him, so it might have been afterwards. It helps now and then to step back and take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it is even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is a way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. No statement says all that could be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the church's mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way. An opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end result, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders. Ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future not our own. This is what we are about. We plant the seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need future development. We provide yeast that produces far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything. And there's a sense of, liber of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something and to do it very well. I find this consoling in the chaos of the world where we would like to just have this is what I need to do and things are going to come right. I love the words. There is a sense of liberation and realizing that, that we cannot do everything. And that I'm only a worker. I'm not the master builder. I am a prophet, but I'm not the Messiah. And so I leave those wise words from that attribute let us stand as we pray.
Heavenly Father, I ask you to bless each one who has taken part in this Hearts of Fire, both here at All Saints Church and on live streaming. May they discover what it is you have been doing in each of them during this program. Creator Father, you have made each of your children a rich soil in which to plant their seeds of prayer and spirituality and may it bear abundant fruit and a rich harvest. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, everybody. There's some tea and coffee, and there are um, some Krispy Kreme donuts. Um, somebody who didn't know I was fasting brought them, so I want to see how big your resolve is, but maybe you can take it to somebody who's not fasting. Um, and you can cut them up. So enjoy. Thanks for coming. Bless you guys.